Have you ever found yourself asking, why does this child act like this? Of course you have, right? You wouldn't be here if you weren't wondering that. So we're going to talk about brain states today. We use the brain state model to help understand what's happening inside the minds and bodies of the kids that we're working with and inside our brain and body too. It helps us recognize where we are at and what we need and where our kids are at and what they need. So there's three brain states, the survival state, the emotional state, and the executive state. We're gonna start with the survival state, okay? This is our base. It's the first to come online when we're born and it's essential to keep us alive. So the survival state asks one question, am I safe? And it represents our most primitive selves, right? It's, it's been around forever. It has a purpose, fight, flight, or surrender. So, so a long time ago, it's what saved us from wild animals. Today, it's, it's important too because it's what gets babies to cry when they need their needs met because it's their only communication. And it's what has us stomp our foot on the brake when someone pulls out in front of us. So the survival state, even though we're gonna talk about it in the context of we don't want this when we're at work, it has a purpose, right? It does keep us safe. But in survival state, for our kids, this is what it looks like in your classroom. Hitting, fighting, kicking, running, running and hiding, physical fits, shutting down, giving up, throwing toys, um, lots of crying, and tantrums. Survival state affects us too. When we're at work, <laughs> the survival state can look like some of that stuff, but hopefully not. It's more likely to look at to look like ignoring behaviors, giving up, doing busy work, right? I gotta fill the forks and get the art supplies out and check my phone real quick. Um, we find ourselves busy work to disengage from the kids in our care. Uh, refusing to talk, uh, walking away, and, and might be hiding in the bathroom. Or it might even be calling off. So in survival state, our kids, they can't learn, they can't problem solve, they can't listen to reason, they can't, can't absorb our lectures or even threats. A person in this state needs to know that they are safe. It's their only focus and they can't put any resources towards anything else. The only thing they need to know is that they are safe. When we're in our survival state, we can't stay calm. We can't download our calm to the kids. We can't offer them solutions. It's difficult to comfort them and let them know that they're safe. It's hard to stay quiet and breathe. When we're in this state, we have nothing to offer to make someone feel safe, okay? So survival state, it's the most basic one. The child is asking, am I safe? What they need from us is to answer that question. You are safe, I'm here to keep you safe. Downloading our calm, being close, lending them our breath. And, and these, um, these downloading calm and being a safekeeper, those are things we can learn about way down the road. Today's purpose really is about being able to recognize these brain states in the children and in us. Okay, so the second one is emotional state. This is way more common for kids. It's way more common for us, for, for us while we're working in the room with the children. The emotional state is triggered when the world isn't going our way. It limits our ability to see from another's point of view. So having empathy for someone is very difficult when we are in our emotional state, right? They're asking, am I loved? For us, this is when we tend to revert to disciplining the way we were disciplined as a child. Even if we hated it, when our parents said, um, 
uh, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about, which hopefully nobody is saying in their classroom. But as an example, those are the things that we pull out of our, our toolkit, right? Because all of these great tactics we learn, we don't have access to them when we're in our emotional state. So think about your ch the children in your classroom when they are asking, am I loved? If they perceive the answer to be no, they are likely to persist in that state. They can't get out of it or funnel all of our resources down to the survival state. So until we answer this question, am I loved, they're gonna, they're gonna stay stuck there. So in emotional state, it looks like they're yelling, um, ignoring, blaming, um, sass or backtalk, where sometimes what we would call attention-seeking behaviors, name-calling. Sometimes it's even excessive clinginess. They want to be with you all of the time. So we, I know we have a lot of this in our classrooms too, and it feels like it's disrespect when they backtalk, when they ignore our requests, um, for the things that we want them to do, but recognizing that they're in their emotional state and they don't have they don't have access to the parts of their brain they need to put a plan together to disrespect you, right? So, in the emotional state, they cannot learn, problem solve, listen to reason, listen to lectures or threats. So when they're in this state, they just need to know they are loved. It's their only focus. They can't put their resources towards anything else. And we can't download our calm, offer solutions, comfort and ensure safety, or stay quiet and breathe. When we're in this state, we have nothing to offer to make someone feel loved or safe. In survival state, they need connection. The bottom line is we can't help them if we're not in the higher centers of our brain. So what we need to do first is be patient and, and be calm and breathe and then download our calm to them, right? Notice, acknowledge their struggle. And our highest brain state is the executive state. It's where we can problem solve and learn, make good choices, change behaviors, it helps us attune to the feelings of the kids in our care. Attunement is crucial to connection. We need to be in our executive state, in our prefrontal lobes, so that we can connect and respond to our children, right? Respond instead of react. Responding means we hit the pause button, we take a breath or two, we make sure that we're calm, and then we step in to help the child. The executive state is where we realize that we, we had the answers all along. When we're existing in our emotional state in our classroom, it feels like there's, no, there's nothing that can be done. There's no answer. We can figure out nothing. And when we can bring ourselves to our executive state, we, we are able to look and see like, oh, I had the answer. I, I know what to do, and now I can try it. In the executive state, we can problem solve. We, we have access to our wisdom and our skills, and we're able to learn, right? So these things that we want the kids to learn, like what to do when they're upset or how to get a teacher when they need help or what to do when they're angry instead of throwing blocks, if they're not in their executive state, they have, are not able to listen to you tell them what you want them to learn. What they can do in executive state is problem solve. They can listen to you and they can learn. When we're in our executive state, we can download our calm, we can offer solutions, we can comfort them, we can make them feel safe, we can breathe and stay quiet. When we're in this state, we have something to offer. We can make people feel loved and safe. Okay, so let's focus on, on just your teacher brain for a second. When you have a child that is in survival state, they are asking, am I safe? So remember, they're in survival state. It's, it's all that physical stuff, right? We want them to calm down. What they're asking us is, am I safe? This is hard to wrap your head around, and I know that, but all of this throwing in this big behavior is this saying, I don't know if I'm safe with you, so I'm gonna make a game out of it I'm gonna make you tell me whether I'm safe or not. I'm gonna throw toys, I'm gonna throw chairs, I'm gonna test your limits so that you can show me that I'm safe. When we're in our survival state, 
The only thing we have to offer is threaten and hurt. And in a classroom, that looks like if you don't pick that up, you're not going to the gym. If you want to play with that again, you better stop. Nobody wants to play with you because you're always hurting them. Do you want me to take you to Miss Jill's office? Right? Threats and hurt. They might look like timeouts. So when we're in our survival state, we cannot help this child. It's our job to bring us up to a higher brain state so that we can let them know that they are safe. If they throw a chair to ask, am I safe? And you get upset, lose your cool, or walk away and ignore them, you're answering the question, right? No answer is an answer. In their emotional state, they are asking, am I loved? They want connection. And if you're in your emotional state, all you have to offer is blame and abandonment. So it might be like, look what you made me do. Or one time I heard a teacher say, um, I have a headache and you're making it worse. As if a child is in charge of our literal health and well-being. It could look like, I'm leaving, bye, okay, we're going. If you're coming with us, you, you better hurry up, right? It can also look like timeouts. And abandon can also look like um, ignoring behaviors. In our executive state, we've got this. We can say, I've got you, I'm here, breathe with me. I'm your safekeeper, we can figure this out. I am here to help. So when a child in survival or emotional state is saying, am I loved, am I safe, and you're in your executive state, you are able to respond and let them know, absolutely, you are, you are safe with me and I love you no matter what. Because how we handle these situations becomes a blueprint for all relationships. All relationships and how they manage stress for the rest of their lives. On an average week for a child in childcare, they are spending more awake time with us than they get to spend with their families. So if you think that you are not influential in carving out the blueprint for the children in your classroom for the rest of their lives, you absolutely are. If you can just think back to your very first memories of maybe childcare or at home when you were three or four, the events that we remember are the way that people make us feel, right? So when these children have big upset and we ignore them or we raise our voice or we threaten them or we abandon them, it's a feeling that they will remember forever and it's how they're going to handle relationships and stress for the rest of their lives. We are modeling the tools for them. So what now? Um, knowing these brain states is not going to give you a magic wand to walk back into your classroom and solve all of the problems. Right now, what you're going to do when you walk back into your classroom is just practice identifying the brain states. The next time a child gets dropped off and is screaming and crying and clinging to their parent and they need to be pulled off and then the runner brings them into your classroom and, and dumps them in there and they're screaming and crying and then they don't want to be comforted. Remind yourself just this, they're in their survival state. They're asking, am I safe? The next time a child is calling names even if they're smiling, right? Because when they smile and call names, we think they're doing it on purpose. They're not. Remember, they're in their emotional state. What they need to know is, am I loved? So they are going to call a name to ask, am I loved? They're going to make a game. It's never a game we, we want them to play, but they're going to make a game so that you can answer that question for them. Am I loved? So how can you show them that they're still loved even when they call you a name? And then executive state. You know, when a child calms down, when you've reconnected, when they can breathe, when they can move on, recognize they're in their executive state. They can take some breaths. And this is a good time for me to say, you were upset because Bob took a toy from you 
next time, next time he takes a toy from you, you can come get me so that I can help you. Or next time you can use your big voice, right? That's when we can access our tools and when they can learn. And recognize those things in yourself too. When your classroom is going bananas and you have nothing in you but to turn around and walk away and ignore the behavior, just recognize I'm in my survival state. I don't feel safe in this classroom. Sometimes it's literal physical safety, but it's perceived threat, right? The stress of it all does not feel safe. Next time you are arguing with a child or you are not able to um, pause and take a breath, just recognize that you're in your emotional state because you don't feel very loved by the kids in your classroom who are, who are taking all of your time and energy. When you're in your executive state, recognize, hey, I was able to pause. I took a couple deep breaths and I was able to pick him up and hold him until he stopped crying. And then we were able to move on. When we have composure, we are able to access the higher centers of our brain. And then we can get the kids to theirs so that they can learn. We have to be the safe place for the kids in our care. And we need to remind ourselves, how do we want to be treated by the people that we trust the most when we're at our worst, right? When we're ranting and raving at home, how do we want our partner, our friend, how do we want our parent to react to us? Do we want them to yell at us? For being emotional? Do we want them to walk away from us and ignore us? Do they want them to threaten us? Of course not. So we think about how we want to be treated when we're feeling our worst and then we empathize with the kids too. We, we recognize that's what they need from us 